Hello everybody, Lord Verminard back again at SnowRunner. We are going to keep going in Amur at uh, Erska River. And I think we should probably try to tackle this job because I think this will be fairly straightforward. And also perhaps we can get this watchtower here and figure out what we need to do to get these bridges opened up. Uh, which I think that sounds like a great idea. So what should we use? Um... I feel like the Tetra Phoenix would be a very good choice for this one. Um, but I think also maybe... Uh, I think maybe it's time to break out the Bandit, because I feel like it would be a pretty good one for this too. Now, it is not quite as stable as the Phoenix is. But i got to be honest, I absolutely love this truck so much. Um... And so, at, with one of the updates that happened in the past year or so, it got dual rear tires for some of the tire sets, which really helps it with stability. Big time. So, um, I need chains. I think we definitely need to have chains. Uh, so what are my choices for that? We've only got one choice. And they're not duals. Well, that sucks. All right, well, we're taking them. This might not be the best choice then, but I guess we'll find out what happens. Yep. <clears throat> well, here we go. So we're going to be taking the, the one road. Instead of going out on the ice like we have been for the last several times, we're going to be going out onto the, to the road here. So this should be interesting. Now, things that have changed with the bandit you might notice that it has more fuel than it did before. Um, this is based on the data that I could find, real-world data that I could find on this vehicle um, that seems to be an appropriate amount. Uh, and I also bumped up the tire size just slightly on it. Other than that, though, it's, um, it's pretty much... pretty much, uh as it comes in the game. This thing is extremely useful. When it was first introduced, the DLC, whichever number it was, I don't remember. Um, but, like, when you started the game, uh, if you didn't tick that option to not include the DLC trucks when you started the game off fresh, it gave you this truck, like, as one of your default trucks. It was, like, already in your garage. And even, like, with the crappiest tires you could get for it, it was still just extremely useful. Whoa. The cameras can get you in this game. I am I'm fairly certain that they designed some of the roads on purpose and some of the hazards that if you keep the stock camera view, uh it will upset you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's that's by design. Okay. Just get her stopped here. I did bump the Bandit's power slightly. I gave it, um, I actually gave it a different engine. I gave it the, uh, um, what the heck was it? It's the one from the, uh, the racing truck, the Azov, um, Sprinter, I think it's called, or something like that. Which isn't a huge bump from what its top engine was, but it, it needed it, right? So, <clears throat> I feel like it's an appropriate choice. Oh, crap. Yep, see? The, the, uh, I drove right off the road. <laughs> because I wasn't looking. Is it gonna roll? I don't think it's gonna roll, is it? Alright, you know what? We're just gonna pretend like that didn't happen. Recover it and leave and just do it again. All right, here we go. This is totally the first time. This is not the second time. I don't know what you were seeing before. That must have been old footage from another day or something. I don't know what happened. But um, yeah, here we go. <laughs> we're taking the bandit out for the first time in Erska River uh, to try to do some of these quests. So here we go.
Now watch me do the exact same thing. <laughs> this time around. It's not like I've never done that before. All right, brakes. There we go. I probably would have hurt hitting that thing at full speed. Okay, one of the things the Bandit's got going for it, for sure, is it comes default with permanent diff lock and all-wheel drive engaged all the time. Um, which, even at the very beginning of the game, gives it an absolute massive advantage. And it's a long... It's a long road to get the upgrades for this. So I think that's how they kind of tried to offset it. In the vanilla game, but I mean, if you know, if you know where to go, getting the upgrades isn't that hard. And then you're pretty much just limited by what tires you can choose. All right, I kind of want to see what what I'm rolling on here. One of the best things about this is that it's one of the one of the early trucks in the game that has a crane and a flatbed option. There actually aren't a ton of trucks that can do that at the very beginning of the game. But it's also it's it's the crane is so much better than the regular loading cranes that most of the other trucks have. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's more powerful, but it also is just, it just, um, I don't know, it just works better. It's more convenient, it's less awkward. Okay, is this where I flip? Let's make sure that doesn't happen again. I think I was trying to get around this rock and didn't see that the road, like, kind of went away there. Right, was it that bit or was it this bit up here? I think it was right here, wasn't it? This is very narrow. Excellent. Okay. Probably should just drive it from this side, but then I, I can't, uh... Can't see the rocks there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Right. Here we go. Oh god. I... I did not realize this was this narrow here. If I want to take anything bigger this direction, I've definitely got to go on the ice. Oh, crap. Oh, what's, what's this rock? Okay, there we go. <laughs> run over these stupid trees. It's actually probably better that I don't have dual rears on it right now because it would probably be too wide to get through some of this stuff. Oh, goody, a bridge. Okay. Just keep her in first gear, I think. I'm not sure what to expect. Okay, it looks like we're done with that nonsense. All right, so now all we got to do is go through here, right? Yep, so we just got to pick up this crap and bring it to where it belongs. Don't you even think about it. Alright. We're fine. Everything's fine. 
I just need to quickly get this here. Okay. Okay. All right. No problem. No problem. Okay, so I remember now. Um, there was a trailer down here. I think. <clears throat> and, uh... I grabbed it to do one of the jobs that I needed to do um, to get to the next section. I remember that now. That was a long time ago. I think it was to... I think it was to get the 605R, if I remember correctly. You gotta go to the, uh, the Cosmodrome. Alright. Well... <clears throat> We can handle, um, actually, you know what? We might be able to, uh, cheese this a little bit. Where's the fishing camp at? Okay, it's right down there. The hunter's winter cabin goes up here, and the explorer's camp gets the consumables. So that's the easiest cargo that has to go the farthest distance. So how do we get to this fishing camp? Is there a, is there a way to get across the water here? Uh, good grief. All right, um... Okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get stuck, first of all. Oh, another thing I did, too, was I gave the bandit a little bit, a little bit tighter turning radius. By default, it was like, like the wheels turned like 15 degrees or something. I'm like, there is no way. That's the tightest that thing can turn. <laughs> There's no way. All right, let's just get past this. I have an idea. So the cargo container goes to the winter cabin, okay? The actual cabin goes to the fishing camp. Okay, that's kind of inconvenient for how I want to do this, but we'll figure it out. All right, I can probably grab it from here. Let me just... Uh, this and we'll see the uh, aforementioned bandit crane in action here it has extremely good reach considering that it's not that big uh oh Ground appears to be a little soft here. No way. All right. We'll just uh, fling this thing over here like that. Hey, the, the quest never said that it has to be in good shape when it arrives. All right. That, that should be good enough to pack it. Boom. There we go. All right. See, what I was going to do was stack those consumables on top of this thing, but uh, I don't think that's a good idea. I think we should just try and get out of here. Hopefully with a little bit more weight, it'll help us dig in a little bit better here. I'm hoping I can actually get out this way. I don't know if that's going to work or not. All right, don't tip.
All right, this is going this is going really well here. <laughs> Let's see if I can give it a little boost here and find some find something solid to to get to here. There we go. Excellent. I'm guessing that was like a frozen bog or something. All right. Now, is there access to where I need to go down here? Um. Well, it looks like I'd be able to go that way, but I don't think there's any way across the, the water. Ermagerd, how am I supposed to do that? Crap. Yeah, look at that frame flexing. Oh, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Aw, oh, jeez. I am not seeing a way across this. Uh... See, I don't even think there's a way across over there, because that bridge isn't there yet. I mean, I could probably just try and send it right here. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to work. And there's nothing to, nothing to latch on to to pull me out. All right, let's um, take a little detour, I guess, and see if I can find another way. Otherwise, I might have to put this down and figure out how to get that other job other um quest to activate to get that bridge built i'm wondering if there's a way across on the other side over here it does not appear as though there is i guess we're gonna have to go a little farther and find out i don't even know if this ice is safe I hear cracking. Ah, that's pretty narrow, but I don't know if I can get across that. There certainly isn't any other way across. Crud. I don't know, guys. Should I risk it? Risk it for the biscuit here. That does not look safe. <laughs> that does not look safe at all. I wonder if I can if I can take the cabin and drop that in the water and make a bridge. <laughs> Drive across the bridge, then pick it back up again. Oh, that'd be hilarious, wouldn't it? Hmm. All right, hang on one second, guys. I got. I'll be right back. I gotta take care of something real quick. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. So this water is moving fast enough that I think if I put that thing in there, it would probably just get washed away. I really want to try it, though. <laughs> this is silly. All right. 
just uh pick this thing up Okay, here we go. Um, gotta rotate it. I have a feeling, like I said, as soon as I put this in the water, it's probably gonna just get washed away. So I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna detach it right away. Actually, I wonder if it would make more sense to drop it in... You know what? It'll make it, It'll make more sense to drop it in this way. I should have left it the way it was. Because it's not wide enough to... It's not wide enough for my wheels. Man, where can I get a little container like this? I need one of these. Alright. <laughs> Alright, well that appears to be a little bit deeper than I was expecting it to be. <laughs> Alright, so so much for that idea. Damn. So I really can't get across there from here. Just trying to have a little fun. Well, that's okay. Well, so I guess what we gotta do is um, figure out how to get that bridge built. Well, I did not know that water was gonna be that deep. There's no way I would have made it through there. All right, fine. Let's go investigate this bridge, I guess. Okay, well, at least we... Whoop, at least now we know what's down there. Um, which is nothing. I can check to see if that's any, any sh more shallow, but... <clears throat> I have a feeling it's probably not. Alright, so now, what do we do? Do I, uh... Do I stick to the outside? Or... Uh, I guess I'll go... I guess I'll go this way. Even though sometimes these rocks make it a little bit difficult. Ugh. There we go. Oh, geez. How am I going to get out? Yes. Okay. All right. So this quest is active. However, there's some strong. Okay. You know what to do. I do know what to do. All right. We're going to start tracking that one now. Uh, two metal beams can do, boss. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to take the little bandit, and we're going to park it uh, right here, I guess. Alright. 
So two metal beams. How the heck am I going to get metal beams there? Um, I'm going to have to come around. I got to pick them up from here. I'm going to have to come back this way and come around this way. Come through here. Come back down this way. That's the only way it's going to work, and i got to have chains. All right, two metal beams. Well, there's only one... Uh, there's only one vehicle that I can think of to do two metal beams. And that is... Well, I could do it with the Fem too, but I think I think that's a job for the twin steer. Uh, I don't think I have chains for this truck right now. Pretty sure I have some. Yes. 63 inch MHS ones. Okay. All right, everybody knows the twin steer. Everybody loves the twin steer. I absolutely love it, too. It's an absolute massive gargantuan beast. Uh, it also tips over really easy. But this thing is awesome. If anybody's ever seen one of these before in real life, uh, leave a comment. I would love to to hear your experience of just seeing one. I know they're real. I just have never actually seen one other than pictures. I just feel like it would be, ooh, it would be a difficult vehicle to use on a daily basis, I guess, in most, uh, in most situations in America that I can think of, other than, like, for, like, construction fields and stuff like that, where there's, like, you don't have to worry about roads. I don't know how something like this could, could drive on public roads. I don't know if it would even be possible. But I think, um, until the Fem came along, this was the only vehicle that could carry four slots of cargo on it, I believe, without a trailer. And for my money, I still think that the Twin Steer is better. It's definitely faster. The Fem is good if you have to carry four slots of cargo through some very, very deep mud. But, in my opinion, I feel like the Twin Steer is better in just about every way. The Fem does have a power advantage as well, I think, um, in the vanilla game. I feel like I've, I've given, I've bumped the power of both of those vehicles a little bit, but they're, I think the, the strongest engines are pretty comparable with one another as far as power output goes. So, there's no real advantage there in the way that I'm playing it. Ugh, there we go. I do kind of wish that it had... The, the, I wish that the front wheels turned a little bit tighter, but... I don't, th I don't think I've changed that from the vanilla game, so it's, it's pretty much as it is. The flexible frames mod does help this vehicle out a lot. That's one of the biggest problems is when you were... Like, if you were turning, and your front wheels cleared something, but your back wheels hit it, if the suspension, uh, or if the frame didn't twist, then it basically just, like... I don't know, it, it like, would fall over almost immediately. It doesn't really do that as much now. It still can. But it's a lot more stable, this way. A 
There's only one... One load of metal beams left, so... I'm gonna have to use it wisely here, and then I'm gonna have to start crafting. Which is a little bit of a pain. Come on, what are you doing? All right. All right, so now we got to go back the other direction, right? Which way am I going? Do I gotta go all the way? Yeah, not up here. I gotta go all the way around into this uh, factory. Here, let me just let me just do this instead of looking at the map and guessing. I mean, I could go up this way, but that seems ridiculous. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna find on this road up here, but I guess we'll just. Um, just roll and find out. How's everybody doing, by the way? I forgot to ask that. Hope everybody is having a great time. Hopefully, I'm having a great time on vacation. In case you missed it, um, I'm redoing this SnowRunner series while I am away. Uh, so I recorded these ahead of time. Ahead of the time that you're seeing them. Um, and that kind of explains why... I'm doing this. I've, I've been wanting to do SnowRunner for a while. I just didn't know how well it would do on the channel. So this is kind of a, a test to that. And it's mainly because I'm um, trying to do the games that I'm doing right now. And planning them on planning the release days for them to make it look like it's a like nothing has changed is just too much mental gymnastics for me to handle. So I'm just going to do something completely different for a week, and uh, you guys are just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> you can watch it or not watch it. I don't care. Back to the regularly scheduled programming after a week, so. But, as I said, you know, if, you know, if you guys are enjoying the SnowRunner content, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If I should do more, like I mentioned before, that I want to do SnowRunner on stream, maybe. That's still definitely a possibility. Um, you know, once I get my streaming schedule figured out. Which I said I was going to start doing that this month, but then some things came up and... Um, I wasn't able to start that this month. Uh, so we got this vacation thing going on. Then maybe after we get back from that, I can reanalyze and, and go from there and figure something out. Because I still want to do it. Oh, right. Well, somebody's home. Lights are on. <laughs> Seems weird that I have to use this place as like a, a road, basically, but... You know. I didn't design these towns, I guess. Yeah, so I was I was pretty excited about when Expeditions was announced. Um, and then after I watched some of the gameplay from it, and I watched some YouTubers play it, I was just kind of like, eh. I think I can go without that. So I never did buy it. I had it on my wish list and then decided, eh, maybe I don't want it. So maybe I'll pick it up one of these days on sale or something, but... It just didn't look that exciting to me. But then they announced another one. I, I don't remember what it's called. Um, where it looks like the concept is that 
you go to these areas that are that are distressed like this and you fix the roads and stuff which is exactly what this game is missing because there's no way that any sane person would send a bunch of expensive trucks and cargo down these roads that are basically just completely either unfinished or completely impassable without at least like sending like a a road grader down or something to like clear out the crap off the road like all the big rocks and trees and shit I love how you're just supposed to deal with that every single time you go past it <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense oh crap Um, what the hell just happened? All right, well, we're not the truck isn't flipped over and thankfully the bandits sitting right there We can fix this um uh, Of course, of course I can't reach it All right All right, so now I just got to make sure I don't flip the bandit over doing this. Should be fine. Oh, crap. <laughs> I can't... These roads are like... I can't see them. I, there's there's dips and stuff, and I can't see them. Because of the... Because it's just like whitewashed out, you know? Okay, that ought to work. This might be a little bit far away, but we'll try it. Now, I'm pretty sure this crane can lift metal beams without too much effort. Ought to be able to. Mm, maybe. I love that you don't have to worry about damaging the cargo. You can just kind of like whack it about and it doesn't really matter. All right. <laughs> Not the best loading job I've ever done. Doesn't matter. We have this nifty thing called pack. All right. Um, here, we want this down, please. All right. I'm thinking that having that cabin on the back of the band that's probably helping it right now. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, boom. And change truck. Tip steer. Pack the cargo. Boom. It's like it never even happened. All right. Let's keep our eye on the road a little bit here. Yeah, this um, this road is a bit deceptive. There we go. Yeah, there's no way it would have gone through that. No way. Way too big. Yes, fix the bridge, underlings. Oh, goody for me. It's a multi-stage. Now I need two service spare parts. <sighs> well, if I would have known that, I would have picked them up while I was here.
right, that's only that's only a two slaughter. Um, so I probably don't need this here anymore. Let's just recover it. And let's pick something a little bit smaller since those are only um, two slot. Let's just use the 605R. Just get the job done quick. Uh, not this. We want this. Although I don't have chains for it. And there are no chains available. Never mind. <clears throat> you know what? We should use the old GMC. I love this thing. Yes, we're going to do this. Um, uh, tires. All chains. 50s. Perfect. And we want a flatbed. There we go. Boom. Ready to slay. Oh, there we go. It's like, why can't I see? <laughs> So I got to admit something. Uh, I'm a big fan of the very first truck that you get in this game. The very first big truck. The GMC MH, whatever it's called, 90 something, other 100 something. I can't remember. That one. And here's why. If you take the time um, to get the diff lock for that truck when you first get it, and you can get it with the Scout, you can... You can take the scout if you find the route on how to get the diff lock in whatever uh, whatever region it's in. I think it's the um, the other Russian frozen lake area, the Siberian frozen lake area. I, I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head. It's not that hard to get to it. Um, the the little Chevy K fifteen hundred can do it, um, and so can the. Uh, the International Scout. They can both get there. You pick up the diff lock for that truck, and it will get you through just about anything you need to get through. It is extremely capable. Um, maybe slightly underpowered, but for the most part, it will get through just about anything that the Russian trucks can get through. And here's the thing. Everybody tells you to get the Tega, like right at the very beginning of the game, right? And don't get me wrong, the Tega is a great truck, especially to have at the beginning of the game. However, I will put the GMC MH, whatever it is, in front of that truck anytime. And here's why. It can do crane and flatbed. It can do flatbed and trailer. The Tega can't do either one of those. So, so yeah. Um, and actually... My whole, like, journey with modding, starting to, like, tweak and mod this game a little bit came from this truck right here. The Brigadier. Because they, they... Ooh, God. They, they kind of, like, showed this truck as, like, a an upgrade to the MH... The MH GMC. It's like a heavier, dutier, you know, more badass version of it. And it actually wasn't. <laughs> It was kind of not as good. It had smaller tires. Um, it has a special engine that gives it a little bit more power, I think, than the than the stock than the the best engine for the MH, if I remember correctly. But it doesn't really have a whole lot going for it. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna change that. So the first tweaks that I started making to the files in this game were with this truck. I gave it slightly bigger tires, which the 50 inches here to match the Russian trucks. Um, permanent diff lock. And, um, like, a little bit softer suspension. Now I, I don't do, I don't mess with the suspension now because the, I have that mod. Um, 
And then I was then I realized after I was done, I'm like, holy crap, this thing is great now. <laughs> it's just as good as the Russian trucks are, so I started using it. Service spare parts, that's what we want, right? There's only one. Well, where in the crap am I supposed to get the other one? Um. Okay, those are metal beams there. Consumables there. Where am I supposed to get the... Um... I'm confused. Did I did I lose service spare parts somewhere? Is there something I need to unlock to to get it? Flippin' hell. I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do here. <sighs> okay. So, I must be missing something. There must be a place to get consumables either here or here. It looks like I've already been down here, though. What was I doing down there? How did I even get there? I must have crossed this ice. Like, if there was a quest down here... <clears throat> Alright. Uh... For God's sakes. Alright, I'm gonna try something rash. I'm gonna get the bandit back out. And come back through here. And see if I can cross this ice and get this stupid tower because there's clearly something that I'm missing yeah see I don't have I'm looking at the uh the map runner site here there was the fueling Which is... Yeah, see, I think I did that one already. Uh... So this is telling me that this warehouse has um I, I'm not seeing it. Okay, that doesn't give you... Nope, that doesn't either. <clears throat> so there's a resupply zone down there in hard mode. I'm not seeing a place to get more service spare parts. Like, it's literally... What the heck? It like... 
That was weird. It like it only gave me one and it like it just it just shut off. Alright. Good lord. Well never mind. I was freaking out there for no for no reason. Alright, so we just take this all the way back. This truck can probably go up that little mountain path shortcut. Probably. Yeah, sorry about that. Jeez, I was like... I was looking at the map and like, wait a minute, this is not making sense. It says I'm supposed to have unlimited resources here. I gotta be careful with this truck. It is very fast and it can... You can get yourself into trouble with it pretty quick if you're not careful. And so, you know, don't get me wrong, um, the Russian, all of the Russian trucks are excellent in this game. They are very, very good. The, the first playthrough I used the, oh god, the, um, the Voron D, I used it for just about everything. Um, despite its shortcomings, which it has, it has many. But, uh. Yeah, and I think, you know, pound for pound, that in a real-world test, most of those trucks would probably outperform the Western trucks in most situations, I would think. Um, so that doesn't mean that I don't like them or don't respect them. I absolutely do. I just wanted to try something a little different. And I'm not going to have a, you know, I'm not going to use a Tega for everything like everybody else does. Because I, I find that truck pretty boring. And like I said, it has some limitations, you know? I like to be able to have... Um, the ability to use... Uh, a flatbed with... Uh-oh. See what I was saying? I got myself into trouble here. Okay. Doesn't steer as fast as it can go. So there's a lot of times where I prefer to have a flatbed and a trailer for four slot cargo. And I don't feel like using the twin steer or something like that, you know? Or a crane and a and a flatbed and a four and a two slot trailer, you know? It can do that too. So I think the developers are trying to kind of balance the game out a little bit by giving the Western trucks more attachment options. But, I mean, really what matters the most in this game isn't necessarily the attachment options as much as it is, like, what can the trucks get through? And the Russian trucks, just because they had permanent diff lock and permanent four-wheel drive for most of them, or all-wheel drive, gave them a massive advantage. All right, so can I go through? That is a path right there. No kidding. Yep, not for this truck, it isn't. Yeah, we're just going to take this down there like, like a normal person. <laughs> not going to try to do anything fancy. Oh god, that's a big rock. There we go. Just jump over it. <laughs> Wait a minute, I better slow down here.
<laughs> there we go. Excellent. Now I think I have to do it again with this next bridge up here. It's probably the exact same crap, too. Or let me guess, there's a stage three. I gotta bring concrete slabs or something. Okay, good. <laughs> Yay, all right. Now we have access to the island, except we don't. Because there's another bridge out right here. Yay. Yeah, great. All right, let's do this one. Two more flipping metal beams, which I have to start crafting now because there's only one left. And probably two more flipping uh, service spare parts, too. All right, so let me see if I can get this thing over to that tower. Oh, boy, I don't know if I can. This is not exactly a scout here. And it's a little bit too... It's a little bit too crazy, I think, to be a very good rock climber. Uh... That does not look like the right way to go down that. Oh, geez, how are you supposed to do this? All right, here we go. This looks... This looks promising. Let's just go straight up this rock. Come on! Damn! <laughs> I thought I was gonna... Oh! Wait, 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 wait. Come on. Oh man, it's so close. What if I put it in low? Yeah, see, I think I need... Uh, I think I need momentum. Come on! Yeah, I can't tell if it wants... If it wants more wheel speed or less. Uh... What if I just go here? Maybe I can go around... No, no, no. Oh God, come on, please. Yes. Sweet. Oh, come on, okay. We're gonna make a rock crawler out of this thing yet. How about that? Freaking sweet. Boom. We did it. <sighs> wow. I can't believe it made it up that. Well, this looks like it probably is as good a place as any to end it for today. Um, we got some stuff done. Not really a ton. We got one of the 15,000 bridges that are broken here done. So that's good. Um, so we're going to have to craft some beams. Because I don't think... Yeah, the only thing here is wooden planks and one metal beam. So the steel mill is here where we have to craft them. 
And where do we get the metal rolls at? I don't know. I'm going to have to figure that out. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. Jeez, am I going to have to bring him from a different zone or something? Well, I guess to I guess the next episode we'll figure that out. Um, but for now, yep, that's going to do it for me today. So thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I had a good time flipping heavy trucks over, and I hope you did too. Um, you know, like I like I kept saying, if you um, like the Snowrunner content, you know, leave me a comment down below, down below or. Uh, even if you don't like it, you know, leave me a comment too. Like, I'm oh, sorry, this isn't my thing or whatever. Um, it doesn't mean I can accommodate everybody, but I'll do my best. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.